Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be back working on the mini. If you remember in the last video I've done some wet sanding and some flattening out of the paint and now I'm ready to get it all polished up and protected, ready for the winter that's coming to us. So what do you normally do when it comes to preparing your car for the winter months? In terms of getting the car nice and clean and with the paintwork protected so that it's going to be easy to clean throughout the winter because let's face it, you don't get much opportunities to get the pressure washer out in those cold, wet, frosty months. For me, I'm always going to start with the wheels. Wheels and tyres and what I'm using here is Garage Therapy Zero Decon diluted at 10 to 1 on the tyres which should be potent enough to give them a right good scrub ready to take a tyre dressing. I'm then using the same solution in the wheel arches before going in with the big EZ Go brush and getting all the plastic liner nice and cleaned up. Moving on to the actual wheels themselves and I'm back in with the Garage Therapy Zero Decon diluted at 10 to 1. I want to get as much as that spray on rinse off sealant that I used the last time off of the car as I plan to put something a little bit special on the faces of the wheels again to try and help them stay as clean as possible throughout the winter. Follow the Zero Decon up after a few minutes of dwell time with the Garage Therapy One Wheel Shampoo not that Zero Decon needs any additional lubrication, but this is just going to give that a little bit extra lubrication and it's going to stop the product from drying out. I can then use my arsenal of various detailing brushes to get in the barrels and get the wheel faces nice and clean. This is actually a new microfiber wheel wash mitt that I picked up from a company. I can never pronounce their name correctly, but I think it's Microfibre or something along those lines. I'm sure somebody will come and correct me at some point. But a nice fresh wheel wash mitt for this wash. Once I'm satisfied that I've hit all surfaces and given it a right good clean, it's just a quick tickle around the lug nuts before we can get it rinsed off and move on to some more interesting stuff. Now, normally I would go in with a citrus pre-wash, but given that I only washed the car a couple of weeks ago, there's no real need for it, so I can go straight in with a snow foam, and this isn't any snow foam, it's the Garage Therapy Zero Decon shampoo being used as a pre-wash snow foam. I've used this in tests before and I've found that it cleans extremely well, and considering that the car's not all that dirty to start with, it's a good base to kick off the decontamination process. Moving on to the contact wash then, and this is just a very quick time lapse. 
Again, I'm using another new product here. You'll see the Microfibre wash mitt that I'm using. Very nice wash mitt. First time I've used it. So still to get a little bit more experience with that before I give any final thoughts. But a nice product to start us off with. In the bucket, I've got the Garage Therapy Zero Decon Shampoo again. As once again, I've got some spray on rinse off sealant that I want to really get off before I go into any kind of polishing. Once I'm finished up doing my contact wash with the mitt is when I like to go in around about all the intricate areas of the car. So I've got the Garage Therapy Zero Decon in the spray bottle once again. This is a bit of a star of the show with this wash. And I'm just going to go around all the grill areas and all the little intricate areas of the car. There's far too many of them to put all on camera. So I'll just show you the grill area and then we'll move on. Once I'm satisfied that the car's clean enough for me to move on, I can start the decontamination phase. And I always like to start this chemically. And I like to start with a tar and glue remover. Mainly because, as you can see, there's a very large chunk of tar sitting on the car there. And there might be some fallout sitting behind it. So it's always best to get the tar spots off before going in with the fallout remover, in my opinion. Now this was always going to be a testy subject for me here because if you don't know this car has had half of it re-sprayed a couple of months ago and this is the first solventy type product that's been anywhere near the paint and it's safe to say it passed with flying colours, thankfully. Now that I'm happy that I've got all the tar spots off the car we can move on to the fallout remover phase and this is the Garage Therapy Zero Iron Oxide and this is quite a nice product, it gives you a nice additional dwell time because it comes out like a kind of gel like product so it hangs about on the panel a little bit more now typically you're, you would expect your panel to turn very bright purple or a kind of reddy colour with the reaction of a fallout remover but you're not going to get it on this car because of how red it is it was very difficult to see any fallout so here's a clip of other fallout Normally, once I've got all my fallout and tar and glue remover rinsed off the car, I like to go back over the car with a snow foam. Now, this isn't a snow foam, and the main reason for that is I need a little bit of additional lubrication for what I'm going to be doing next. So this is actually a car shampoo, and it's Garage Therapy V2 car shampoo, and I'm using it in conjunction with a clay mitt just to make sure that there's no contamination left on the car before I start polishing. Now you can use a clay mitt, a clay cloth, a clay bar, whatever your preference is. In this instance for me, with there not being a massive amount of contamination and with a lot of the car being repainted, the clay mitt was more than enough to get anything off of this car. Last thing that we need to do now then before we can start with some of the fun stuff is just get the car dried. Now it is true that your drying towel won't perform very well when it's dry but a quick tip just to sort you out there is to go around your windows and get all the windows nice and dry and that will dampen up your drying towel enough before using it on the paint. No need to get the hose out and wet your drying towel down. Now with me wanting to get this whole process done in just one day, 
I am only going with a single stage polish here and it's really just to try and cleanse the paint. I'm not going for any mad correction or anything like that here because well, on the painted areas there's not a massive amount of correction required. So I'm just using the Zvisor Medium Pad with the Zvisor Medium Cut Compound which is a bit of a one step compound and I'm going to be using that throughout the whole vehicle. When it comes to doing flat panels I sometimes find it really quite difficult so I got this handy little tool from KDN Detailing and it just helps you prop open things like the boot or the doors of the car just so that you can get right up to the edges without worrying about hitting for example in this instance if I went right down to the bottom of the boot lid there I could end up hitting the bumper and marking the bumper whereas using this little tool just helps you keep the panel away from any other panels and allow you to get full coverage when you're doing your polishing. Once I'm finished polishing, the last thing that I need to do before I can put any wax or anything on the car is use a panel wipe on the full car. And the reason that you want to use a panel wipe on the car is just to get rid of any polishing oils that might prevent the wax from bonding properly to the paint. You're also going to get rid of any polish that's stuck in any scratches that you might not have got out throughout the polishing phase and just help get a better overall bond with your wax to give you the best finish and try and get as much durability out of that wax as possible over the winter months. The wax that I'm going to be using today is a wax that I've had for quite a while now. It's an ODK Pyramid Car Care collaboration wax. It's a ceramic wax and it's got an anticipated or expected durability of around about six months. Now I know from testing this wax in previous occasions and I've had a good four months out of it without really topping it up. So I'm hoping 
that by using this wax and if I can as regularly as possible when I get the chance to wash the car, keep it topped up with a spray on rinse off sealant, it should keep the paint as protected as possible. This really is an easy wax to use. You can very easily cover a whole panel, let it cure up and then buff it off. When it comes to buffing off, it comes off very, very easily. A quick finger swipe test just to make sure it's cured up enough and ready to come off. And then what I'll do is I've got these microfiber, um, microfiber towels, which are short piled on one side and slightly longer piled on the other side. I like to use the short pile side to take the wax off. And then once I'm happy it's all off, I flip it over and use the, the higher pile side to give it a nice buff up to a nice shine. I did mention earlier on that I was going to be doing something special with the wheels and by special I mean trying to protect them as much as possible throughout the winter. So with that in mind I'm going to give them a quick polish in preparation for the ceramic coating that I'm going to put on them. And the ceramic coating that I'm going to use is of course from Garage Therapy because I've still got half a bottle left and it's the Hades wheel coating. Now I've already done a video applying this wheel coating to the wheels that I've got for the Subaru sitting in my garage so I'm not going to go too into detail on it. All I will say is that it is a very very easy alloy wheel coating to use. I've used a few in the past that have actually tripped me up a little bit however this one is so so straightforward. If you want to check out that video I will leave a link in the top corner. And on that note that brings us to the end of this video and realistically to the end of the project mini. I hope if you've been watching on the other channel that you have enjoyed it. If you've not, go and check it out, I'll leave a link in the description below. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to hit that like button. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.